With 167 days of inactivity, after the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the world with such brutal animosity, the Rotax Raw started to breathe life back into the home of champions at Karting Genk in Belgium for the first of four rounds. With new restrictions, new guidelines set into force and restriction on competitors, six classes would head into battle at the 1,360 meters circuit. Sadowski leads, Marsh in second, Mies Huben third. Fourth it's Jake Menton, ahead of Zdenek Babishek who's being uh, closed in on and now passed by Boaz Maximov. Marsh now trying to go for the lead as Max Sadowski runs very, very wide. Oh, way too wide and that allows both Scott Marsh and Mies Huben to get past as Menton. As, oh, Huben runs wide. Oh, we've had one spin around. Oh, and Scott Marsh has gone off of a turn seven. Sadursky manages to get through, and we've had another one go off. That was Jake Menton. Red flag has been called. Red flag has been called. We go lights out and off with four minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. Scott Marsh trying to get away from Mies Huben, who's going around the outside. Oh! Now, I'm not too sure if there was a little bit of contact there, but Scott Marsh goes 180 degrees and backwards off of turn two. It looks like uh, Avisil Kutai from Austria now up into third place. Boz Maximov in fourth. Max Sadursky trying to use as much of the track as possible and gets past Boz Maximov for P4. Jake Menton did briefly take the lead, but now Mies Huben has it back. Menton goes towards the inside of turn two, goes up the inside and, and manages to get his way past Mies Huben. Boz Maximov in the meantime has got past as it is nearly, oh, Mies Huben goes round in the inside of Jake Menton on this particular occasion, through into turn eight, but then Mies Huben goes towards the outside of turn nine, trying to get the cut back through the two, we're nearly side by side, but Mies Huben powers past. Lights go out, we're racing. And Max Sadursky gets an absolute flyer. Up into the lead, through into turn two. That visor, and we've had a jump start penalty awarded, and the driver it has gone to is the one that is leading, well, that was leading the race. It's not leading the race now. It is Jake Menton. Going sideways, coming through turn eight as they're trying to apply the power. The back tyres are spalling up, the traction starting to break. And in the meantime, Jake Menton trying to go up the inside of Max Sadursky through into turn number nine. Left front and right rear wheels as they go across the start finish line. Marsh up the inside of Babishek. Babishek towards the outside through into turn three. But Marsh takes the inside line, puts the power down, comes through the exit of turn four. Babishek still on the 47. So Huben comes out of the final corner, crosses the line with 1 minute and 27 seconds on the clock remaining. So we will have this plus another two additional laps because the timer will run out the second he crosses the line. Huben is just under 1360 metres away as he comes through turn two for the final time. Heading to Portimao in early December, it is Mies Huben from the Netherlands.
revs rise, the accelerators are pressed down hard. We are lights out and racing. It's trying to go up the inside through in off Fernand Franco. And that isn't now. Jasper Lane has tried to go for the lead through turn two. And he's trying to go for it again. It's a three wide for GKS Lemons Power going through turn three. Oh no, Radenkovic goes in and spins it out of turn four. Which has got Matthias Souvedou. So Tam Saleh, Jasper Lehners, Cahol Stout, Vic Stevens. And now Thiemann Huben ran out the top five. As as they're trying to power around through the corners, the back ends are breaking traction and it's spooling up the rear tyres. Aljaz runs nearly two wheels on the kerbs, out of turn nine. Oh no! That is a disaster there for Boluetu. Uh, Boluetu goes round. Matthijs Silverdu trying to make some moves forward as oh there's been a spin and that is for Vic Stevens and that cart is going nowhere the for Tam Saler from Germany Carol Stout will take second place for PG Motorsport in the 143 in Euro Trophy history. Revs rise, lights go out, and instantly Renel Franco is out in terms of trying to catch up with everybody. The car, is, the car is breaking down, it looks like. There's a mechanical drama there. And I think now, Renel Franco bangs the steering wheel in frustration. That leads the way by over 1.25 seconds ahead of Karol Stout, Demon Huben. Mateo Radenkovic, oh, we've had a little bit of a spinner there, and that is the one 07 of Bolouet from Belgium. Sam Saler at the moment is on effectively an aggregate of 50 points. And provisionally speaking, winning the inaugural Mini Max race weekend. It's Germany's Tam Saler from GKS Lemons Power with a double victory here on finals day. Now the lights have gone out and there's been a major problem and that was I think that might have been Thomas Martins. Felix has the lead as uh, Will McIntyre looks to be up into third position. Bruno Mulders has uh, shot his way up the field and around the outside goes Colin Van Lammeren round the... Uh, oh no! Was there a little bit of a touch there? Bruno Mulders spins out coming out of turn four. The 277 on the CRG chassis drops like a proverbial pebble in the pond.
and uh, he will take the chequered flag by a considerable margin. The wet weather equalizing things here at Karting Genk. Kai Healers tentatively comes out of the final corner, will take second position quite nicely here. Nick Gerhardt takes third place. Revs rise. Full start. The Rotax drivers. Let's see what the race director says this time. Oh, bad, bad start for Nick Gerhards, who absolutely drops to the back of the field. Oh, and one cart going off in avoidance. Gerhards has started to break away. Now, even if Kai Hewlett's finishes second, it won't be enough for Tim Gerhardt to get the weekend win because that'll put the Dutch driver in the 205. Oh, drama off of turn 10. That's Lucas Schoenmacher who's gone spinning 180 degrees. pair go wide oh oh no another spinner another spinner and that was the 263 of Colin van Lameren from the Netherlands and Marcus Lutzio now up into eighth position 277 goes Will McIntyre or does he he does he goes through turn three Marlers tries to get through on the inside of turn four makes the position but then Will McIntyre switches to the inside ran the inside of the Dutchman goes Will McIntyre up into what is now third on the road from 20 dirt on the grid. But Tim Gerhardt for the Netherlands, but in second, provisionally speaking, takes the series lead and pats the right side pod. It's Kai Hilitz from Belgium. Will McIntyre with one of the drives, if not the drive, of the weekend. Started 23rd and finished in third position. Game on here in Senior Road Tax. This is a well controlled start from Matilda Olson, but a little bit of a bog down from Luca Lystra. The lights go out for 14 minutes. But the drivers are still all circulating. Hustled of all people, Oli Pilka from Poland, from SP Motorsport. He's now up into P4. Rain now starting to fall again as we've had another driver turn around and that is the 318 of Fabian Bock from Germany. Oh, and they nearly go completely wide and off the track, off of turn two, as it's three abreast and through on the inside, that is Lewis Gilbert as they're swarming all over each other. Oli Pilker trying to go around the outside of the Scott through turn four, can't get through. The Dolroy Diamond puts the brakes on quite firmly, but then Pilker towards the outside, he misses out on a position, trying to get the cut back. He's got the, he's got the run in the SP motor, Motorsport cart, and he slings shots past Lewis Gilbert, who instantly counter-attacks going through into turn seven. The lead now between Dylan LaHaye and Kai Hunter was over 4.4, nearly 4.3 seconds. Oh, there's been a turnaround. 
Oh no, that's Reese Hunter! And he gets a front end impact as a result. As now, Lewis Gilbert has got past Matilda Olson for position. But Olson goes back up the inside to retake the place. Final corner comes Dylan LaHaye in the 328 to take the win. Senior Road Tax, one of the most explosive categories when it comes to racing action at the limit of adhesion. The ninth and final one set to conclude the action. The Revs Rise lights are out and we are racing! And oh no, Butcher hits the side of Reese and goes spinning! And everyone else is trying to avoid. Butcher rejoins all the way down the order. He's going to drop out of the top 25. That's disaster, disaster for Sean Butcher. Zombar Kovac, Andres Hebel, as Max Stamadin gets passed by Gilhelm de Oliveira, as there are more dramas. Of the 3.79 from Denmark, and now goes for it. Jinx to the left, goes, jinx to the right, goes to the left. Trying to get a bit more traction coming through turn two. Gets a real good run. Oh, slips in front, just in front of turn three. Brilliant dice there by Lewis Gilbert, but Masteries re-counters. And then so does Lewis Gilbert, so they change positions twice in two corners through turns three, uh, th three, uh, sorry, four and five. God, I was so excited about that one. I got my, my corner numbers mixed up. To 4.231 seconds. La Haye in prime position. As up the inside goes Zombar Kovac again on Kai Hunter, just behind Andreas Hebel. Doing the double, Dylan LaHaye wins here on home soil in Belgium. go out the accelerators are pressed, pressed to the floor lights out and off and away and we've had a spinner at the back of the field and one of the uh, drivers I think might have been possibly Luke Sheepers as now Manuel Atencha loses out to Silas Ritter Keynes takes a wider line trying to get the run through the corner as it's nearly three abreast and round the outside was that Glenn Van Parijs I swatted. Manuel Tenshet rounds out the top three, closely followed by Germany's Niklas Kreins from 42 competition. And we've had a five second time penalty and it has gone to Silas Ritter for a jump start. But then Niklas Kreins going round the outside of the Austrian, through into turn two. 
He's going to try and get the run of momentum coming out of the corner. Goes towards the outside of turn three, can't get through. But then I've just seen, is that Frederick Yeri going past? If you're going past the defending champion, you've got to have some massive guts to do so. And the pair clash. The pair clash going into turn six as the leaders now squabbling their way through turn six. Renz again goes towards the outside line to get the power down. Closing on Tensha. Tensha saying, come on, man, work with me. Four minutes and 45 still to go. And Niklas Krenz trying to get the upper hand and has been passed by Matthias Lund. Has a chance, a big chance, because he has a five second time penalty post race. And if he opens up a gap and he's starting to do so. As now, oh, Lund goes up the inside towards Gren. Oh, a little bit of a tussle there. Oh my goodness. Matthias Lund went to go across the front of Niklas Grenz and the back right, left tyre hit the right front of the German's cart and nearly sent the 42 competition cart off the circuit. Four tenths of a second quicker. The chequered flag provisionally will wave for Silas Litter, but he will be demoted as a result of a jump start five second time penalty added to the race. So effectively, Manuel Tensha will win. And as was once said, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Revs rise, throttles are pushed down, we are off and racing. Manuel Attention gets the lead as uh, rounds the outside drift. Nicola Pico, Glenn Van Parais up behind Manuel Attention. Pico still up into third place. Niveris. Oh, the Greek Minotaur is well and truly back. Up from 10th to 6th place after just the first lap and a bit. And he did say to me earlier on today, I'm feeling determined. That just meant if you get the ball, you get the horns. And that is for 6th position. And then Bezil gets pounced past by Yeri from Austria and then tries to go up the inside through the next corner and round the... Outside, you've got to be kidding me! I cannot believe I've just seen that. Who was that? That was the 437 of Luke Sheepers. Oh, sideways for Yeri coming out of turn six. Struggles for traction. Oh, up the inside goes Sheepers. Oh, right rear wheel on the grass. Oh no, Sheepers goes off. So trying to really get past Niklas Keynes. Shreblak gets past Bartels, who goes sideways coming out of turn nine off of the curbs. This is the thing that's sort of stumped me a little bit. I didn't see Matthias Lund showing up on the timing screen. So whether there was a transponder issue, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure that I will find out in due course. I could see the burning passion earlier on this weekend through Glen Van Pelaas. Had a really, really nice man about. Really, really good guy. Been racing in Porsches, but he's come back to karting. He's doing some driver coaching now. But Van Pelaas, has weathered the storm, kept going, never given up. Yeah, oh, he's gone into the side of Liveris, bouncing off of the curbs, and Shribak's gone through. Another Belgian winner in final number two. Proficiat Glenn Van Parijs from Belgium takes the checkered flag and wins final two in DD2.
is injured. Red lights on the starting bench. The drivers will very shortly. Oh, oh my goodness me, that was a bit of a moment there for Bart Kuhlman. But the lights still go out, so Bart Kuhlman was caught unawares there because of the slow starting uh, duo at the front as Christoph Adams leads going into turn one. Ronaldo Kremiger, who started down in 13th position, now up to 8th place as Christoph Adams manages to get past Rudy Champion through into turn number 6. Champion trying to, trying to get past, trying to thread the eye of the needle through, trying to go up the inside of Humpel Hart, who still secures third going across the start-finish line. Lap number 3 we go on to as Thomas Schumacher again trying to use the outside line to carry the momentum through the corner, put the power down. Doing the same through turn three, pointing the car towards the inside of Rudy Champion. But Champion manages to get to the apex of the corner before Schumacher has a chance to get through. The gap between the leaders, uh, when we uh, completed lap number three, was just over seven tenths of a second. And then it was just over four tenths between Moransky and Humpelhart as Michael Becker now coming under fire. And that will be from Carl Klevorts from Belgium in the 510. So the 527 drops to the back of the field pretty much. Well, he drops down to 13th place as I haven't seen Tanya Yildiz cross the line yet. And he will do now. As it was side by side between Bart Kuhlmann from Belgium and countryman Carl Klevort. Oh, and we've had a coming together. That is Bart Kuhlmann. And that looks to be Carl Klebold, but Christoph Adams now coming under fire from Sebastian Rumpelhart, who goes past the Belgian like it was absolutely nothing, heading into turns one and into two. An ultimate lap. And now there are dramas. Christoph Adams starting to struggle because Carl Klebold goes up the inside of Rudy Champion. The pair go nearly side by side coming out of turn 11, but Christoph Adams has dropped significantly. After a difficult race day yesterday, he goes into final two as the provisional race winner for final one fist bumps the air with the right hand. Maransky is back on the top. The revs and the accelerators will help the Rotax Roar scream once more this weekend here at the hallowed halls of Karting Game. And we are racing. Tom Dessert as, oh, we've had a moment already and that looks to be Michael Becker, I believe. Yep, the 526. Oh, Conrad Bauer goes around the outside and does a 360 through turn four and keeps it planted. Oh, <laughs> Racing action comes to its inevitable conclusion, and as fast as it came around, it was even quicker, seeing it fly on by. Slavomir Moransky now 
uh, loses out to Christoph Adams on the penultimate corner. But, provisionally speaking, one hand in the air. As Sebastian Humpelhart from Oris Competition takes the win, provisionally, and with it, I think takes the weekend victory. Christoph Adams takes second, ahead of Slavomir Mananski. That we can still drive. It helped me a lot and uh, do a lot of training at home and uh, do a lot of simulation and it uh, really helps me. Yeah, just drive a lot in simulation and do always on the highest and on the difficultest, then you learn a lot. Yeah, I'm really happy to join uh, JJ and uh, they are really good, the speed is really good. With six different drivers winning six different categories, a halcyon moment after the disaster of the COVID-19 pandemic saw karting back at its very best, especially with the Rotax Raw. Next up after Belgium, the Whistle Stop Tour continues as Germany is the next host on our travels, as the Pro Kart Raceland circuit will welcome the four normal mainstays of the Rotax Max Euro Trophy, but along with it, comes a bright and promising future as Project E20 and the Deutsche Elektrokartmeisterschaft join the ranks in early September. <laughs> 